so yeah the recording is going um hi everyone if you're watching this recording today we have um a google summer of code uh, related meeting uh one of our project uh, ideas is related to windows services uh, specifically yaml configuration support with the support of uh, uh, verification for configuration files um, and we decided to have a dedicated session to have an Q&A and to, um, to do a deep dive into the project. Uh, we have uh, six people on the call and I suggest uh, to do quick introductions. Uh, in, I could start if everyone is fine. Okay, and, and then I'll just uh, go uh, through the list in Zoom. So my name is Alek Minashov. I am a maintainer of Jink. Score and I'm a 17 year of Windows Service Tracker. Now, right now, I dedicate uh, not that much time to that, unfortunately, but I hope to change it uh, during the JSOC time frame. Um, and yeah, over many years, I was maintaining um, uh, Windows uh, subsystems uh, for Jenkins, even though I was running on MacOS for something like six years. But uh, right now, I'm back to Windows. Uh, and uh, I am uh, happy to study new technologies today and uh, I'm happy uh, to work with students and mentors who are interested in uh, Windows Service Wrapper area. Um, so I'm Mike Serioli. I'm an engineer um, currently working at CloudBees. Um, this is the first time I will hopefully be mentoring a project uh, for GSOC. Uh, this project in particular is sort of interesting to me because in a previous lifetime long ago, um, I had some experience in creating Windows services and Windows service wrappers. Um, so I don't have nearly the Jenkins knowledge that Oleg has, um, but I do have some experience um, in this particular area. So um, that's one of the reasons I'm interested in this project. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. My name is Marky. Uh, I am a Jenkins org admin and one of the maintainers. Uh, I'm here just to be an observer. Mm -hmm. hey, uh, I'm Sumit. Uh, I am a potential GSOC student. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'll be applying to this project or not, but I guess there is something to be learned uh, everywhere. So, um, so I'm also an observer. <laughs> and you already have an application dropped. That is true. <laughs> I'll link it uh, later. I'm really thankful for your reviews. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks for doing that. I'm Buddhi Vikaturanga and uh, I'm uh, finally undergraduate of uh, University of Moro 2 and I'm looking forward to uh, participate uh, Jenkins uh, with this project actually. I like to uh, learn those um, uh, those co-concepts co uh, of Windows. So that's why I uh, choose this project and I propose my uh, proposal and I got some uh, uh, valuable feedback uh, from you Oleg and I, I would like to really thank you uh, for those uh, uh, feedbacks mm -hmm. uh, yeah and I think uh, yeah, that, that's all mm -hmm. yeah. thank you as I said, uh, there are also two other students um, uh, with whom we have uh, ongoing discussions about this project. Unfortunately, they weren't able to join this session, but uh, we may meet them um, in charts. So, yeah, they might be more students. And next time, would you like to introduce yourself? Maybe not. Um, yeah, so I'll just do a quick summary. And next time, if you want uh, to uh, join later, just do so. Um, so 
uh, yeah, there was a bunch of recent contributions uh, um, and thanks a lot uh, to that. So basically currently I maintain uh, the project in terms of reviewing pull requests, well barely reviewing them, but I'm trying to catch up. Uh, but the most of recent contributions came from next turn and there is ongoing uh, transition of the project to the new state. So you can see that uh, there were major features delivered, including uh, a complete rework to the uh, new uh, project structure, including uh, features like uh, .NET Core packaging, basically native installer and, and other things. And there are more changes to come soon. So. And thanks a lot uh, for next time uh, for the interest in this project. Okay, uh, so um, I think we could have a quick summary just to get everybody up to speed. Um, so on the oh, hi Alex. Hi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, sorry for uh, late late coming. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so okay, so we basically finished the uh, self introductions. So if you would like to quickly introduce yourself, just uh, do that, and then uh, we could proceed with the uh, details. Um, uh, I could uh, I could briefly introduce myself. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Alexander Grigoriev. Currently, I am I'm still a BSc student in Budapest, Hungary. Uh, and uh, this is my second uh, attempt to take, to take part in uh, Google Summer of Code. Uh, yes. I have a overall knowledge in C Sharp, I could say. Uh, with the help of my, uh, with, with your mentors and mentors from my side, uh, we could uh, gain uh, some uh, success with a probable proposal. And uh, I also, uh, yeah, I should mention that I also uh, uh, experienced uh, software tester and uh, on, on manual testing and a bit of automation testing, and uh, the next uh, the next summer, if uh, if the issues with the uh, the current global issues will resolve, I will take part in the Aureli uh, Open Source Software Conference uh, with a uh, with a special testing topic. Yeah. Great, thanks. Uh, well, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you too. Okay, let's take a look at the project. So, um, yeah, basically the description is similar to what we had in the previous year. So when Alex was participating, the idea basically was migrated. Um, the idea there is to have a new configuration format support for Windows Server Starter and to improve uh, um, uh, analysis of these configurations. So Windows Server Strapper is actually a, a separate repository. Right now it's hosted in uh, Kiki's personal account. So Kosiki is a founder of Jenkins project. He also created a lot of uh, development tools and system management tools, including Windows Server Strapper. Uh, but right now there are uh, hundreds and thousands of users uh, running it in different uh, projects, thanks to the license, etc. Um, here, what we have right now, uh, this uh, project supports only XML. So if you go to documentation, you can find uh, um, some documentation about configuration file. Basically, it's XML. It looks like that. Or, well, it may be a bit longer because there is a huge number of different options. Uh, but uh, this format is, uh, well, let's say it's quite legacy. So it was created uh, in 2006, 2007, uh, when project started. At that point, there was no YAML. Uh, basically, there was no JSON at that point. It just started. Uh, but the situation in 2020 is uh, quite different. Uh, there are new uh, 
configuration management formats, uh, which are widely used uh, um, in uh, configuration management systems. It's not only about Kubernetes because Puppet or whatever, they also uh, use declarative definitions. And uh, XML wouldn't be uh, that bad, but right now the implementation of XML uh, configuration management in JSON has a lot of, uh, sorry, in the Windows Service Wrapper, it has a lot of limitations. So for example, you, there is no pre-flight check of this configuration, uh, how it works right now. Uh, we have uh, 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 configurator class, uh, which basically reads uh, configurations on demand. Uh, just a second. Uh, yeah, uh, I believe it's settings file now. Mm, default settings. Uh, let me find it. Yes, yeah. a bit behind. Uh, yeah, so basically, there is uh, there is a number of configuration items you have to provide, and uh, once uh, this uh, configuration is ready. Um, I need to find the code base, but yeah, I guess all students have already seen that. Uh, so for me, it's just a matter of time finding that. Uh, the problem uh, is uh, these configurations that, uh, yeah, this one. Uh, so you can see that uh, there is a lot of uh, code there, but basically uh, um, many fields are being read on demand by just processing XML. So you will know about the issue maybe in the process of execution. And it will be great to have some pre-flight validation, uh, which would happen uh, on a startup, or maybe even when uh, de a developer uh, defines the configuration. And it was the second part of the project. So YAML support, um, a better validation and validation tools, which would uh, help um, Windows Service Wrapper uh, and Jenkins users uh, to properly configure Windows services. So that was uh, the idea. And I guess all students on the call will have already went through that because we got uh, proposals from everyone. But if you have questions about uh, the project goals in general, uh, it's probably the best time to discuss them. Mm -hmm. Any questions, any comments? Uh, Oleg, I yeah. wonder, uh, could you more explain, uh, could you explain in more detail uh, mm -hmm. what kind of uh, login would be applicable for this kind of project? Mm, is it not enough or um, could, you, could, you, could you comment about this part? Yeah. yeah, so login, uh, well, it has quite tough history in this project. So when I took over the project in, uh, well, it was 2014 or something like that, there was almost no login in this project. So it was just failing when something was wrong and sometimes without details. I spent some time uh, in order to improve uh, login across Windows Service Wrapper. So now it uh, uses uh, log for net. So if somebody is familiar with Java util login, it's basically the same for .NET. Um, and uh, uh, there are some system messages being printed uh, in uh, key events, but still loading subsystem is quite scarce. So in some uh, main uh, local entries uh, are missing, and especially configuration processing. Because one of the main problems, as I said here, if something goes wrong, um, as a user, I would rather expect it uh, to get information on a startup, maybe as a log message. Uh, but it may happen on the, when a Windows service wrapper uh, needs uh, this configuration. And I can, you, uh, can provide you a disaster scenario. For example, uh, there is a configuration for failover. Um, yeah, failover actions. And uh, let's imagine this configuration gets um, uh, processed uh, when uh, the triggered process failed. So you read uh, this configuration and then you discover that this configuration is broken. So you cannot really do failover for the service and it just failed. And as you can see, well, here it will just throw uh, exception. So something will break, but definitely your service won't proceed as expected. 
So for me, <coughs> one of the topics for login and for verification is to just provide information uh, about configuration issues on startup. And if you hit any um, uh, non-standard situations during the execution, um, it would be also nice to get some uh, such details. So for me, it's a secondary target in this project because uh, if uh, configuration process and gets reworked, uh, the number of these issues will drop anyway. Mm. Does mm. that answer your question? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so currently, yeah, logging system is basically built around um, a log for net, though uh, there are some uh, um, exceptions. So for example, a Windows Service Wrapper has its own event logger extension point uh, because, yeah, firstly, due to historical reasons, and secondly, it needs to integrate with Windows specific components like uh, um, uh, events manager. So in uh, Windows, if you're an administrator, you can go to system events and discover uh, errors reported by your services, by your applications. So there is uh, some logic which basically provides a disintegration, and this logic hasn't been fully integrated with the log for net. So in some cases, you can uh, see that uh, there are two event logging systems. And uh, yeah, we got some issues with duplicated log entries, but by now they should be mostly cleaned up. <coughs> okay, uh, I have follow up question about uh, the mm -hmm. seven login. Does uh, the current implementation has its own application log mm -hmm. in event log system on Windows event log system, or there is much success? There is no such a thing at the moment. Mm, yeah, there is such a system at the moment. Uh, so right now, um, if I recall correctly, it's still being done uh, by manual implementation. Though uh, there are log for net appenders, uh, which uh, uh, write to um, uh, system uh, event logs. And Ooh. if I recall correctly, I haven't migrated it. Yeah, I need to double check it because it was a while ago. Me but too. I suspect that we still uh, use uh, manual creative system. And you can see that uh, there are still some open issues uh, of, uh, for different components. So, for example, uh, STDR, STD out. So, since we talk about service wrapper, okay. service wrapper yeah. still uh, wraps the service. And right yeah. now we don't have full routing of um, event logs, which could be uh, manageable by users. So this feature request is basically open. I submitted a pull request a while ago, uh, which would make uh, logging fully configurable with .NET. But yeah, I have never finished it. And it was 2018, not that long ago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if somebody wants to take a look at the logging system, you can just export uh, the existing code. You can export some pull requests, some issues, because it's quite popular topic. And it's a good source for um, initial contributions. So if you want to try out uh, the code base, you could just uh, take a look at logging. Uh, uh, I was asked to mute my microphone, but I couldn't find this option, unfortunately. Sorry for uh, get information out of the topic. Um, okay. So, ah, yeah, found it. Okay. So yeah, you can uh, check out other bits here. So you can see that uh, there is a lot of open issues. One of the reasons that uh, some scrap is needed. There is actually a lot of uh, valid uh, requests, um, especially feature requests, because um, this project started as a Jenkins service wrapper, but right now it's being used uh, by many projects. And basically each project uh, 
they have for their own cases. So, and obviously there are bug defects, uh, uh, bugs and defects which still need to be triage. Okay. Any other questions? Especially from Sumit or Budika. Uh, if you have something, don't uh, hesitate to ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think it's okay. I think uh, I had mm -hmm. some issues about uh, uh, I was looking at uh, kind of a uh, ML to object uh, converter and I got the uh, answer for this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, let's go on. I think uh, let's see. I think it seems okay up to now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Uh, so regarding uh, conversion libraries, um, if you consider doing um, YAML uh, to class uh, mapping uh, in your projects, okay. so here, as I said, we uh, do manual parsing uh, of XMLs. Well, we uh, get a DOM, but uh, we do not really um, uh, convert the DOM to objects automatically. But there are libraries in uh, C-sharp, in Java, which actually do such things. And it's a best practice uh, to use these libraries. Um, if you want to export them, there are several options for .NET. And one thing you need to keep in mind uh, if you export this area, that right now the project supports uh, .NET 2.0. So .NET to the zero is pretty old version. Uh, it well it basically it existed before NuGet, before real packages in .NET, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and before the library ecosystem uh, evolved. So it may be an uphill battle um, uh, to include libraries, but if uh, it becomes a blocker, I think uh, right now we are open to just say that we do not support. YAML configurations in .NET uh, 2.0, and uh, I've already opened an uh, issue which basically would say that we deprecate it. It's, it's yet to happen, but I think that it's something on the table. But if it becomes a, a blocker for your project and for your discovery, I think it's not really a blocker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any specific questions about uh, libraries? Yeah, uh, the library that I found is uh, YAML.NET uh, library. Uh, and uh, I stopped the project and uh, I uh, did some testing with it and I tried to uh, pass uh, YAML into, uh, I, I tried to deserialize uh, YAML uh, file into uh, the time uh, configuration object and uh, uh, it worked for me. And, um, so I thought it uh, is good for this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, I'm sorry, I don't hear you well. Um, but... And uh, also, again, I had uh, some problem with uh, uh, you had mentioned in the application that I have to uh, uh, validate uh, ML ISMA before uh, digitalizing the ML into uh, the ML object. And uh, um, I got uh, some suggestion uh, to do with uh, this uh, schema validation with uh, JSON schema. And uh, I uh, suppose that in uh, uh, my application, uh, uh, the, the workaround that I proposed is uh, converting uh, YAML into JSON and uh, getting the JSON schema externally and uh, can uh, compare those uh, JSON schema with uh, the schema that you convert into. Mm -hmm. 
sort of for me it's hard to follow what exactly you are asking uh, so if you could repeat it in the chat it would be great um, okay, okay. yeah just uh, open to your proposal uh, for now okay. so, yeah we'll, we'll not mind I go uh, yeah, put here uh, yeah. so find for the second proposal later mm -hmm. If we work on JSOC later, uh, yeah, all of us will need uh, uh, to work on audio setups because uh, yeah, we recommend having regular meetings, usually once or twice per week, uh, to sync up with students about their projects. And yeah, having a good connection and good audio is really important to make uh, these meetings efficient. Sorry, I didn't uh, yeah, no, no worries, it happens. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, while you write your question, is there anything else? Uh, is there any other questions? Uh, and uh, yeah, then we will uh, circle back to this project. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I, I have small. I did I miss something? I think my Wi-Fi connection is uh, has some loss of something. Uh, so just uh, in the meantime, I'll uh, pose my question. Uh, okay. Actually, uh, so I, I I'm just not that familiar with uh, this project in particular. But what's uh, just a question that come um, came up in my mind is that. Uh, like why would uh, am I right with thinking that we want to go towards YAML so that uh, I mean is there something specific with Windows uh, configuration validation or like why why is the need for this exactly? Mm -hmm. So YAML specifically is not needed for Windows. YAML rather becomes a common uh, engine for configuration management tools. So, for example, if you use Kubernetes, if you want to provision uh, Windows uh, machines in Kubernetes, then Kubernetes is all about uh, YAML. Pretty much uh, the same for Puppet, for other systems. And uh, just offering a configuration uh, language which is, uh, design, uh, which is used in these environments is firstly easier for users. Secondly, they can integrate uh, them, for example, into automatic provisioning, into automatic versioning systems and it becomes much more convenient than just XML and again uh, I would be happy with XML as is uh, if it was uh, working right but I would say that the current implementation causes too many, too many issues okay so it's basically so that uh, because a lot of systems are already built to use uh, YAML like uh, Kubernetes validation and uh, easier mm -hmm. user user design or easier to yeah. the user yeah, it's easier for users uh, sometimes it's easier to configure so personally i'm not a big fan of yaml for the record because uh, yeah if i use xml i can use xsd schema which is uh, really perfect for configuration validation unfortunately yaml uh, has uh, limited options we just discovered it again uh, this year in Jenkins because we had a project related to Jenkins configuration as code. So maybe you have met uh, Sladen Nunes uh, in chats. So he was working on uh, um, Jcask developer tools project, uh, basically the verification for YAML configurations um, in the Jcask plugin. Yeah, again, it's YAML. 
and um, there were a lot of issues uh, related to the limitations of JSON schema because YAML itself it has specification, but it doesn't have any validation tools on its own. So they basically use uh, JSON tools because JSON is convertible to YAML and vice versa. But still, there is a lot of limitations. So we completed these projects. But if you ask me whether I'm happy about what JSON schema offers, no, I'm not. Uh, but it's still uh, useful for users of Windows Service Wrapper. So I think it would be a great addition to the project. And if you see other opportunities, again, uh, what we post on the Jenkins website is a project idea. It's not uh, the final project proposal. So I believe that if you have any viable uh, uh, project idea for Windows Service Wrapper, which would be interesting to the community, uh, it would work, even if it has nothing to do with this uh, original project idea at all. Sorry, I'm, uh, there was just one line you said. I, I just I just missed okay. it. Uh, you said XML was good for. Uh, you you liked XML because you could do XSD. Uh, so XML itself is terrible, but it has XSD. XSD. Uh, yeah, XSD. So it's a schema for XML, and it has great support by tools. For example, if you use Visual Studio, etc., you can uh, uh, develop uh, XML really efficiently. And uh, development tooling for YAML is uh, behind that. It's behind uh, what I, we had for XML uh, in 2012, in 2015, when I was actively working with the .NET ecosystem. And now these tools uh, improved even more. So yeah, it's uh, just a reference for what XML has. And for example, if you want to write the XSD schema for the current Windows Service Wrapper XML configuration, it's also a valuable addition to the project. And I believe there is even a ticket for that. And just a second. Yeah, yeah, provide XSD schema for YAML configuration files. No. Yeah, uh, we had some discussion about uh, with next turn about uh, feasibility and potential obstacles. Uh, so yeah, XSD may also not cover all cases because XSD the structured format uh, in Windows Service Wrapper, uh, there is a lot of uh, um, uh, flexibility you get because it doesn't have standard XML parser, standard XSD schema check. So it's basically free form development. Uh, but I believe that uh, Foundation YAML could be developed. Uh, sorry, not YAML XSD schema. So if you would like to take uh, a look at that, it's also possible the ticket is there. Yeah, you may see that it was open uh, for quite a while, but I believe that it's still relevant. Thank you. Okay. Thank you too. So, any other questions, comments? Alex, you wanted to ask something. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just uh, yeah, uh, making some notes for myself. Could you please tell me, um, uh, for example, uh, if 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 this uh, service will have a separate log file, is it feature should, could be nice to have, or is it not so interesting in this project uh, in in general in uh, it's already available. So right now, when you start Windows Service Wrapper, uh, there are three files uh, being created. One okay. is uh, log for uh, the wrapped service, basically for executable view trigger, and the two other files are for wrapper itself. And if you take a look at the Jenkins site, you can try, for example, installing Jenkins agents as Windows Service. Um, and you can see how these logs are being created. Uh, for example, uh, yeah, there is a component called Windows Agent Installer, and uh, this component uh, installs um, agents uh, for Jenkins using Windows Service Wrapper and other tools. And you can see how logging subsystem uh, works uh, there. 
moreover, there is, um, I believe that uh, even support plugins in Jenkins, for example, we have support core uh, plugin. So basically it's a plugin which uh, allows to retrieve uh, basic information about the system for diagnostics. So to create support bundles, uh, which users uh, use, for example, submit the issues in Jira. And here, if we look for Windows Service Wrapper, I believe that, uh, yeah. So uh, there is slave logs. Yeah, we have all, all terminology everywhere, unfortunately. Uh, but here, what you can see that um, there is some magic which actually fetches uh, service logs from Jenkins Master and from uh, Jenkins agents, uh, and they use uh, standard tools provided by Windows Service Wrapper. So in Jenkins, we already heavily use a logging system to provide diagnostics for Jenkins users when something goes wrong. So you can check it out. Okay, yeah. Uh, I just uh, just to clarify, <coughs> uh, you can uh, so the the logs uh, from uh, slave transfer to the master node and. Uh, yeah you could see them uh, in one place in general yes okay thank you uh, yeah uh, we do a lot of such diagnostics with jenkins because jenkins is a distributed system and distributed systems are terrible to troubleshoot if you don't have special tools so jenkins uh, basically provides uh, this to link on its own and uh, yeah, with Windows Service Wrapper, you can connect a uh, log for NAND, you can uh, uh, stream it to Windows system logs. So if you have properly configured uh, system environment, uh, it shouldn't be a problem even uh, for standard setups because admins can uh, just collect the data from uh, different Windows systems. But uh, it's also possible on the Jenkins side. Uh, small bit of side question. Uh, I have not uh, seen it. Uh, is a is a deadline for application uh, still ten days from today or like twenty six or twenty seven? Um, okay. So what I can answer is that we have this timeline, which is considered as official timeline. So it means that yesterday the application period began. It means that now you can go to the Google website and submit your application or application draft. Uh, we had students who started reaching out to us a couple of months ago. Uh, so um, basically this is just uh, time for application and the deadline is March 31st. Again, uh, this year we saw the situation with coronavirus, etc. All these dates may change. Um, but uh, we are just a JSOC organization, so we have no influence uh, with regards to that. It's up to the Google OSS team. They decide to change that. I believe uh, all students and all mentors will be notified at the same time. But right now, yes, in two weeks, uh, the applications close. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, I have uh, some. Uh, um, I need some maybe usage um, information about the current implementation. Like, what, uh, what, uh, uh, on what um, operating system, Windows operating system, uh, Jenkins solution comes most? Like, this is Windows server the latest windows server or is it, is it uh, windows 10 or yeah this is actually a very good question and uh, actually i don't have a good answer to you um in, so this project is held uh, under the umbrella of uh, platform seek and uh, yeah, so let's just go to the seek page 
and here you can see that we have regular meetings and uh, one of constant action item uh, uh, on my side is to create a job uh, it's Jenkins enhancement proposal for Jen for unit support policy by the Jenkins project so right now we don't have strict policy defined uh, what I can tell you is that we have users running on uh, Windows uh, 7. Still, we have users running on Windows Server, uh, different versions. We have uh, users uh, still running on Itanium. Uh, we sometimes see 30-bit platforms. Uh, uh, sometimes we see requests about XP. And right now, well, if you can uh, run Jenkins there, then uh, it's supported. Uh, but uh, we don't have strict policy and it's something to discuss and define on the Jenkins side. So we understand that it has to change. Uh, but uh, yeah, right now this is uh, the current status quo. So we will have something improved and the uh, inputs uh, from Windows Service Wrapper actually are really important. Right now we have uh, two major um, components which impact uh, the compatibility. One is Windows Service Wrapper because here you have .NET. So in order to run a Windows Service Wrapper uh, until next time submitted uh, native images for .NET Core uh, several months ago, it was always only possible with .NET Framework 2.0 or above. So we need this .NET Framework. Um, it was one of the requirements why, for example, only Windows XP Service Pack 3 was possible at the time. Yeah, it may sound like an ancient history for you, but when I started uh, working with Hudson and Jenkins, it was uh, mainstream technology. Um, and uh, another project is uh, Windows Process Management Library, uh, which is also a project started by Kiki for Jenkins. And apparently it's also used outside Jenkins. So it's uh, native code uh, for managing Windows processes. And uh, it uh, defines our requirements for Windows uh, API compatibility. So these two projects mainly define uh, which versions of uh, Windows we can support. And yeah, the other requirement for recent versions is that you should be able to run uh, Java 8 on an operating system. Though right now it's not a big deal even for Windows XP if you can build the OpenGDK properly. So that's the current state. No good answer, but uh, if it becomes a blocker, uh, we can make decisions uh, on this front. So if we need to say that we need to support on the Windows 10 or above or Windows service, whatever version, there's something we could do. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. It's uh, quite important. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, I could also a bit follow up. Uh, there is some um, like small problems with uh, research <clears throat> because I, I, I was going to use one of my uh, university hardware machines, but now it's, it's closed uh, for, for maintenance. Uh, yeah, global mm -hmm. situation. And uh, the question about operating system, it's uh, raised because I'm going to um, uh, to create uh, some VMs and uh, test the current solution and uh, propose, I think it will be improvements. Maybe it will be for, in my project, which probably it will be the existing XML schema, but I'm not sure at the moment. We will discuss it further. Uh, yeah, so I'm just thinking which uh, uh, operating system I should uh, uh, should set up and uh, test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So my recommendation uh, for development purposes just take recent versions. So if you have a laptop or Windows 10, okay. Uh, if you have a server, uh, just whatever uh, server version currently provided uh, by Microsoft, because I guess you have educational license uh, for your department or whatever, so you can start from it and yeah, use it as an input. And for all the versions, we can set up test automation. Though right now, uh, there are things to do there. 
So you can see if you go to the project that now we use a pair to run testing. And uh, for pair, we basically run it on uh, whatever uh, configuration which uh, provides us uh, recent Visual Studio. So we do not uh, do specific testing for all platforms. So I still have um, all setups which I can uh, invoke if it's really needed. Uh, but uh, yeah, testing on all the platforms is also a problem for this project and it's something we could discuss. But it's not a problem which would be uh, fully up uh, for students to be solved. Um, and uh, yeah, you shouldn't install Windows XP just uh, to support all versions of Windows in uh, Windows Service Wrapper. Does it make sense? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you too. Okay. So, anything else for today? We have eight minutes uh, left. Then, if there is no questions, again, uh, feel free to reach out um, in a sync mode. So we have platform C, we have mailing list, and don't hesitate to ask any questions there. Uh, right now, as I identified in the JSOC mailing list, uh, the responses may be delayed because mentors, as everybody else, are also affected by the current situation in so many different ways. So, uh, but yeah, we are doing our best. Uh, to provide assistance to students. Actually, there is another question. I just uh, will maybe uh, just speed, uh, so just quick question, which I, which I had, uh, which I had not researched so much. Uh, like, uh, is it possible at the moment to have a master server on uh, Linux and have slaves on Windows? Yes, it's possible and it's one of the purposes for Jenkins. So Jenkins is designed to, to run distributed builds across operating systems. And yeah, it's a very common use case. Ah, so it's irrelevant. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you too. Okay, then uh, good luck with your project uh, proposals. Mm, if something gets uh, delayed, please ping me. Uh, I have all your project, uh, project, uh, project proposals in the list. And I guess, Alex, you are still going to resubmit your project proposal, right? Yes, I'm thinking that uh, um, probably it will be a bit... Uh, different uh, than the previous year and uh, uh, that's why i'm asking about vms and i i, I could i could dig deeply and uh, uh, propose some something some several features which could be implemented on the top of mm -hmm. uh, as a as a colleague's uh, yaml configuration or existing uh, xml configuration we will see we maybe we will also initially discuss this uh, yeah, that's perfectly oh. fine. And again, uh, what we offer is a project idea. Uh, whatever uh, you want to propose, uh, just bring it on. Good. It would be interesting to get uh, your insights. And uh, in your case, Alex, since you also want to have a mentor uh, from uh, your university, if I understand correctly, it would be important uh, if you establish a contact between this mentor and uh, Jenkins JSOC team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just uh, just contacted them, contacted him, and uh, mm -hmm. I ex expect to receive some uh, answer within two, uh, one or two days. He okay. we, we met before in, uh, in person, and he generally says, "Okay." Uh, but uh, we are going to schedule like uh, personal meetings, but it's not possible anymore, at least for two weeks, maybe maybe even more. And uh, mm -hmm. so we we will find uh, like additional options. 
for the situation, probably. Okay. Or, or, or alternatively, I will be orphaned. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. So uh, on the Jenkins JSOC site, everything happens remote. Um, and yeah, to be honest, uh, these uh, video calls uh, um, are rather a uh, fallback scenario. So we expect the most of communications happen asynchronously in mailing lists and in chats. Uh, during the main project, we will still uh, be using video calls for set, uh, sync up between mentors and students. Uh, but it will be totally up to uh, the teams to define uh, the meeting uh, um, slots and uh, the cadence of meetings. But uh, yeah, please use async uh, communications as soon as possible. And you, if you, Alex, couldn't uh, uh, invite uh, your mentors uh, to JSOC, Jenkins JSOC mailing fees, uh, or, or if you could just start a thread and uh, CC them, it would be a good starting point. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, did I understand correctly? I could invite him to participate as a, or as a official mentor of this uh, project idea as well? Oh, why not? So, I mean, approach, uh, yeah. I mean, you had uh, this, uh, for mm -hmm. this it was additional deadlines for your team, as far as I know. So, it, mm -hmm. it's... It's not a big problem, okay? Uh, so for uh, mentors, uh, there is no deadline. We have deadline for student applications and we had a kind of deadline for project ideas. Uh, but yeah, basically, mentors can join projects at any time. And uh, during the uh, project selection phase in April, we will be actually doing a lot of additional leg work uh, if we need to find more mentors for teams. Because usually, yeah, this year we have 25 potential mentors right now. Uh, we have a lot of students, but uh, when you start uh, mapping uh, students, mentors to projects, you discover a lot of gaps. That's why April is quite interesting uh, for us as our companies, but yeah, it's our job. Mm -hmm. So right now it's not a problem. and You, you can uh, take it offline and take as much time as you need. Okay, okay, I will, we will discuss uh, this issue with him okay. and uh, I will follow up about this. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, anything else to discuss today? So, thanks everybody and yeah, let's uh, continue the discussion uh, asynchronously. So, if there are any follow-ups needed or so yeah, it's seen that the next time had uh, problems with audio. So again, we can use uh, mailing list uh, to discuss anything uh, um, uh, mode if needed. And if you have any ideas for Windows Service Wrapper, please feel free to submit them uh, directly on GitHub issues for the component because uh, Windows Service Wrapper has its own set uh, of uh, uh, watchers uh, who may be interested in commenting the issues. So it, it will definitely help uh, for, uh, to get more feedback for your project uh, proposals. Okay. The last uh, question. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, did you, will you like uh, share this uh, video recording uh, on YouTube or where could I find it uh, in order to yeah, so we publish uh, all the recordings on the Jenkins YouTube channel. Um, I will uh, post a link later. So it may take me maybe 24 hours to get it published. Okay, I will check uh, G Gitter mm -hmm. platform. And uh, okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. So have a nice week. And uh, yeah, again, tomorrow we have online meetup. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to join, uh, but yeah, it's mostly introductory one. Uh, so mm, and next office hours, um, it will happen next week. So, um, it will be common agenda for us. Okay, bye everyone. Thank you. Okay.